Amen. Amen. Well, good morning again, Bethel Temple family and friends. So glad to be here today. And we have been enjoying this uh, series, <clears throat> No U-Turn. Uh, have you been enjoying that series? I hope you have. Listen, if you've missed any of those messages, you can find them all right there online on our webpage. And go on, I encourage you to go back so you can know each week what we have been focusing on. Last week, my wife and I, we took a couple of days off and I felt good because we had some, we were in capable hands with, with, the, with the right Reverend uh, 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 Dr. Ron D. Berry, and he came and he, he brought a powerful word on last week, and, 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 and it was a timely word, and, and it fit right into our no U-turn focus. He was talking about a factory reset. He challenged us from 2 Kings uh, 23rd chapter, and he, he talked about resetting your passions and you, being persistent and pulverizing. He, he didn't say just getting rid of, but he said to pulverize the, the, anything. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 put it this way. Pulverize the junk in your life. Get the stuff out of the way that can prevent you from being useful to God. See, see, the no U-turn, this focus that we've been talking about, it, 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 it has two purposes when you listen to it, or, or you can be focused in in two different ways where you can think about a direction or, or you can think about the Y-O-U. But see, our main focus is on the Y-O-U, the individual. And that's what Pastor Ron was conveying last week when he was talking about the factory reset. See, when he was talking about the children of Israel, the children of God, he was talking about God had already given them all the things that they needed. He had called them by the, he had called them by the name. He, he had given them the name. He established them as a great nation. He had did all these things, but it was their rebellion and their disobedience that caused them to need a factory reset. How many, how many of you know that sometimes we can cause our own selves to have to have a factory reset? See, the thing you got to realize is this, that, 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 God's uh, uh, plan for us doesn't change, but sometimes we got to go back and get it right so that we can get it right. And see, the only way we're going to get it right is we have to be right, which means sometimes you have to go back and reset yourself so that you can. The thing about this, God's plan, God doesn't have to reset. See, God doesn't have to have a, re, a, a do-over. See, his plan is already stable. It's set. It's firm. See, his plan is not going to waver at all. It's us. See, it's when we get ourselves all twisted up that we have to go back and hit the reset button to get readjusted. And see, sometimes even though the direction, we, we talk about direction, I mentioned the Y-O-U, and there is a direction because I've mentioned it a little bit, but the direction is only for a momentary time. It's the glance. See, it's about looking back sometimes. Even in the scripture, it talked about looking back at the things behind us, but it told us to just take a glance at it. See, we shouldn't gaze at it. We shouldn't get stuck on the past. Sometimes it's hard to get out of the past. Sometimes we want to stay in the past because sometimes for, for many people, the past was good. See, we got some good memories, some fine memories of the past, but God is saying, I can't do the new thing in your life if you keep looking backwards at the old stuff because I got some new things that I want to do in your life. This past Friday, during our, 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 our Zoom prayer with Reverend Kevin, he did something. He, he challenged us to reflect back on Psalm 124. And, it, and if you know anything about that passage, basically it's saying this, if it had not been for God on my side, where would I be? And so people had to get vulnerable for a few minutes just to share what were some of the things that were happening in their lives. And if it wasn't for God, where would they be? But that's still, that, that's still only for a momentary peek back, to glance back at, because that's only your testimony. But you can't live in your testimony, because if you're living in your testimony, you can never fulfill what God has for you moving forward, because God is always about doing something new. And that's what Isaiah uh, was, was communicating to the people of God in, in, in the 43rd chapter of Isaiah, in verses 18 and 19, which are our, our prime passages for this text, for this series, but he was basically telling them, I want you to remember, God's saying he wants you to remember the old, but he wants you to expect the new. And the only way you're going to expect the new is that you have to turn away from the old and begin looking with your heart open to receive. But this morning, my wife has already said that, that my focus this week is coming from uh, 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 the next two verses, which is verses 20 and 21 of chapter 43. So if you turn there real quick, and our focus this week is about praise. Listen, this is what it says. 
It says, the beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, uh, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. See, throughout the Old Testament, we can find numerous passages where God, you know, he reminds his people that he called them. Listen, he desired relationship with them, and, and, and he reminds them of things that he did for them. Even when he had to discipline them, God still let them know, I'm still your God. I'm, I'm still the one who's looking out for you. I'm still the one who has your best interest at hand. See, sometimes we, 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 we go on through our struggles and our tough times. We forget that God is still God. But God doesn't change. He's still who he said he is. No matter what your circumstance is, all you have to do is trust him no matter what. Listen, he, he, he let them know I love you. He also let them know that I'm going to honor everything that I said, everything. He's talking to, to the children of Israel now who, 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 who are in captivity, but he's letting them know I'm going to honor everything that, that, that I told the, your forefathers. I'm still going to do it. You're still going to experience exactly what I said he reminded them that he had redeemed them. He reminded them how he had brought them from under, uh, out of bondage when they were in Egypt and, and from under the, 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 the wicked hand of, of the, the old, old Pharaoh. He, he reminded them, I, I delivered you before, and because I love you, guess what? My power is still the same, and I can deliver you again. See, just because you, you, you got out of a situation one time and you find yourself in something else, look, don't give up on God and believe that God now can't get you out. Because there's no circumstance that God can't remove you from. He, all he wants you to do is to trust him. Reminders. Sometimes we need the reminders so we can really understand who God is. See, see, sometimes reminders serve this way. They help us to learn God's character. Sometimes we forget just who God is and how powerful he is and how much he loves us. Guess what? If you ever forget how much God loves you, all you got to do is think about Jesus and think about the cross. That's enough to let you know how much God loves you. There's no greater love than that love because he sent his son to die that you don't have to die, that you can live a life forever and ever through eternity, a time that can't even be Confined. Listen, reminders of the past help encourage you uh, a victory, of past victories, have to remind you of victories that you need now. If you know that you've been victorious in the past, it's easy for you to say, okay, God, you brought me out that time. You ever had that kind of testimony? Lord, you did it that day, and I know you can do it again. Or sometimes you can see somebody else being victorious. God, if you did it for them, God, I know you can do it for me, and I know it's nothing that you can't do. Sometimes uh, 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 we forget who God is, and, and we forget what he's done, but we have to remember, we're reminded, and God wants us to know that. See, these reminders were vital. They were vital to the children of Israel. They needed to know. They were still in captivity. They needed to know that God had not abandoned them. Yes, they were being punished for their own discretions, but at the same time, God said, I still love you. And I believe that today, these same reminders are vital. They're applicable to us that's sitting here right now and those that are listening to me right now over the airways. These, things are, these reminders are vital to us today as well. And I believe we're going to find out why as we dig into uh, uh, the, this, this, these verses today, and particularly verse 21. So look at verse 21 right quick because there's an answer in here as to why it's so important. And it says this, this people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. See, what, what, what is God saying to us? He's letting us know this. I, I created you to declare my glory. I didn't create you for your glory. I created you to declare my glory. See, in other words, it's all about praise. And it's all about his praise. Not about us being praised, but it's about God being praised. Look, in Revelation, the fourth chapter, verse 11, it says this. It says, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. How I many of you know that there's nothing created that God didn't create? He is the creator of this world. He fashioned it. He, he spoke it into being, and there it is. And so he, he is the creator of all things. And it goes on to say, and by your will, they exist and were created. 
Listen, when you think about this word glory, glory is derived from a Hebrew word, doxa, which means dignity and honor, worship and praise. That's what it means. So to give glory means this. And if you're going to give glory, it means to, to praise. It means to recognize the importance of or the weight of another, that, uh, the weight that another carries. That's what it means to give glory. See, you don't give glory to things of no significance. You give glory to things that are of great significance. We, we, don't, we don't heap praise on stuff that, that doesn't matter. Look, you don't praise the water bottle. You don't have a reason to praise the water bottle. But you do uh, 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 give people praise on their birthdays and on anniversaries and, and, and when they, they, they accomplish great things in their life. We do that. We give praise to our favorite sports teams when they get the big victory. Oh, we shout victory. We praise them. We're just applauding all their efforts. Did you see them run that ball? Did you see them hit that shot? Oh, we're giving all kind of praise. But in the context of today's message, you know, this glory and praise that I'm talking about is only reserved, only reserved for the one and true God. See, there's nobody else who can receive the glory and the honor and the praise that our God deserves. I have a witness in the house today. Nobody else deserves that praise. Nobody else deserves that honor. Look at what the writer of Psalm 107 says in verse 8. He says, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. He didn't say, oh, praise men. No, he said, oh, praise the Lord for his goodness, because there's no greater love than what he does. There's no greater good than what God, we just finished singing how good God is, and maybe God wants us to really recognize just what that means. See, we need to praise him. We need to praise him for his goodness and for his mercy and for how he, he, he just loves us. And, 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 and we got to heap praise all upon him. See, we have, to, we have to understand that when we realize who God is, that's when we begin to give him some sincere praise, some sincere glory, and some sincere honor. See, if you don't really understand who God is, you're not going to glorify him. It's just like a person just walking down the street who had a birthday. You're not running around saying happy birthday. No, but you're going to say happy birthday to those who are significant in your life. And so if you understand who God is in your life, guess what? You're going to give God some glory. You're going to give him some sincere glory. You're not going to give him stuff that's left over. You're not going to give him, oh, God, I think I got a little bit left I can give you. No, you're going to start out your day giving him all the glory, giving him all the honor, and giving him all the praise. See, I want you to understand something about this praise. See, praise is not something that just comes from your lips. See, praise is also something that you do with your life. See, you don't just praise with your mouth and then act any kind of way with your life. See, your praise from your mouth and your actions in your life should line up, and they should be working in unity together. So when somebody sees you praising this way, they should see you praising that way. See, you shouldn't be acting one way and then praising another way because it doesn't work. See, you got to give him some good praise, some sincere praise, some honest praise. And so today, I got real quick, I'm going to give you three principles of praise. And see, last week, Pastor Ron, he talked about three Ps, but I got three Ps too, because when he started talking about those Ps, I'm like, oh, Lord, Lord, don't let him get in my message, God. But you know what? God had a message for him, and God got a message for you today. And see, I'm talking about three Ps. What's the three Ps? Purpose, position, and perspective. And you got to understand all three of these because they're really important in praise. The first principle is the principle of praise. Well, praise is our purpose. So you have to understand, the Bible makes it perfectly clear why you were created. God created man for his glory. That's your purpose. He created it. Look, ultimately, our purpose is to glorify God. If you're trying to figure out why you're here, you're here, number one, to glorify God. To give him glory through your life, through your words, through your actions, you're here to glorify him. Look, praise is not only the words, you know, that we say, but we got to demonstrate these things. Listen to what David said in Psalms 34 and 1. He said, I'm going to bless the Lord. And he said, I'm going to bless him. He said, I'm going to bless him when? At all times. That means every day, every moment, every second, every opportunity I have, I'm going to bless the Lord. Now, for David, these weren't just mere words. See, David, David not only demonstrated these through his, through his lips and his words, but he demonstrated through his life. How do you know that? Because we know that God referred to him as a man after his own heart. And God's not going to put that title 
on anybody if they aren't living the life that deserves that. And he told him, look, God, look, look, notice the difference. See, I'm going to give you just a quick, quick difference between him and Saul. See, 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 now, now, now Saul was the king and so was David. But listen to what it says. Saul, he was choice and handsome. This is what the scripture says in 1 Samuel 9 and 2. He was choice and handsome. Matter of fact, it said that there was none more handsome than him. I mean, he was the best looking thing walking the earth at that time. And, and they wanted him to be their king. But how many of you know that, that good looks don't necessarily equal good character? See, you can look good and be terrible. You can look dressed up and still stink. See, that's, that's what we have to understand. That's why these things got to line up together. <laughs> they got to line up together. See, and then even this, look, 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 when, when he sent the prophet, he, he told him, look, this is God talking now. God tells him, say, there he is right there. Now, you know, you get ready to be the king. And he, he said to him, he said, there he is, the man I told you about. He's going to be the one that's going to be the king over my people. But it goes on, we know that after a while, see, see his, 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 his character began to come up, see, because his heart wasn't right. See, and sooner or later, that's what's going to happen with all of us. See, you can, you can fake it for a little while, but guess what? After a while, who you truly are is going to begin to rise to the surface. See, it's just like this. You can pour some oil in the water, and guess what? It might go down, but guess what? Uh, after a little while, you're going to see it rise back up to the top. And see, that's what happens in our life when we don't get rid of the sin and the junk that's in there. That's why Pastor Ron was talking about last week. You got to pulverize that mess because if not, it's going to come back up. And then before you know it, you're going to find yourself acting in ways that you shouldn't. But see, when, when, when God sent the prophet to, to David's house, when he sent him there, he told him, look, don't look on their appearance because it's not about that. He said, I'm about the heart of a man. And the person that I have, 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 have chosen is somebody that's after my own heart. And we know how the story goes. Saul's life didn't end well. See, he had all the things. The people wanted him. He was this great looking guy. He was the one that was going to lead them, but his heart wasn't right. David wasn't perfect, but David, one thing about David, David was going to get it right. David was going to make a mistake because he was not a perfect man, but David knew how to drop on his knees. He knew how to repent to God. He knew how to ask God to forgive him. And because he had that type of heart, that's why God said, that's a man after my own heart. Because he knew that whatever he did wrong, he was going to say, God, forgive me. And he wasn't going to find himself back there. See, he understood what repentance meant. He said repentance wasn't to do a 360 and fall back in the same place. He knew that meant turn the other way and don't be found there again. And so that's how he lived his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Now, we know that David was important, but guess what? We know that David was a man of praise. David wanted to praise God with his life. He wanted to praise God with his lips. He wanted to praise God with his actions. How do you know? Look, over 50% of the Psalms was written by David, and the Psalms is just songs of praise to God. He, he wrote over 50% of that, and God allowed him to do that because he knew his heart was right. Now, some of us, we can't sing. Can't carry a tune in a bucket. But it doesn't matter because God told us to make a joyful noise. See, it ain't even got to be a noise that you like. I might can't carry it like somebody else. I can't sing like Pastor Nate. I can't sing like my wife sing. But guess what? It don't matter because to God's ears, it sounds so good when we're giving him the glory and we're giving him the praise. And so I would encourage you. Don't let nobody shut your praise down. You need to go ahead and press on through and praise God anyhow. Amen. Hallelujah. Look, it's still for us. Listen, look at what it says in 1 Peter, the second chapter. Pastor Ron mentioned this scripture last week. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Do you realize what God is saying? Do you realize that we are special to God? Do you realize how much he loves us? Do you realize how much he cares for us? That you may proclaim, but you got something you got to do. That you may proclaim what? The praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. See, when you get out of the darkness and now you're in the light, 
It's not for you to go and start gloating in your own accomplishments. It's not for you just to say, oh, yes, I'm good. I'm on my way. I'm, I'm, I'm saved and happy. No, God expects you to give him the glory, to give him the praise for the things that he has done in your life. It's not about us because in us, we can't do nothing. In us, we don't have the power to create nothing. We don't have the power to accomplish anything other than what God gives us the strength to do. Whether you realize it or not, you didn't wake up this morning by your alarm clock or by the bird or by the car that rolled down the street. You woke up because God tapped you on your shoulder and he said, get up, my son. Get up, my daughter. You got another day to, to do some things that I want you to do to advance my kingdom. That's enough right there for you to give glory. If you got life in your body, you should be just praising God right now because you didn't have to wake up today. Somebody didn't wake up today. Somebody woke up today in a hospital. You woke up this morning in your comfortable bed, and you were able to get up, get yourself dressed, and to come out into the house of worship or to tune in on your phone or your computer. That's enough for you to give God a whole lot of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to you, God. Lord, it's almost 11 o'clock already. Woo! Listen, listen, we, we are chosen. God has called us. He has brought us out of darkness. And we're supposed to praise his name. We're supposed to give him glory. If you go through the Psalms, there's scriptures that say, oh, clap your hands. There's scriptures that tell you to lift your hands and praise him. There's scriptures that tell you to shout with a voice of triumph. It tells you this just to shout to the Lord. There are all types of praise in the Bible, in the Psalms, that tells us to shout. And those are things that we do from our lips, but it's not just from our mouth. It's what else we do, because God also tells us to love one another. God also tells us uh, to forgive one another. God also tells us to be good to one another, to be kind to one another, to be courteous to one another, to care for one another. You don't do that with your mouth. You do that with your actions. And so if you're doing this praise, and you're doing this praise, and you're not doing none of the other praise, you need to check your heart. You need to check your praise level, because it's not right. See, praise is not just what you say. Praise is also what you do. So you can praise God all day long. But then when you walk out the door, if you don't live what you just praised, guess what? You ain't living it right. That's just the first point. Wow. I got two more points. Huh? I should keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Second praise. Second principle of praise is this. Uh, 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 you have to understand that praise establishes your position. What are you talking about? Listen, Israel, they were, in ba they were under Babylonian uh, uh, captivity. They were, they were locked down. But, the same, but, God even, but even in that, God still wanted them to praise him. See, he still expected them to praise. He still expected them to give him glory. It didn't matter what their current state was. See, if you're waiting until you get good to praise God, you may not ever praise God. So you got to praise him where you are. Sometimes you can praise yourself right out of your circumstance because you just keep praising him anyhow. And before you know it, you moved out of the situation that you were in. But if you're waiting until you get there to praise him, you may not ever get there. And you may not ever get the praise that you desire to give him if you're waiting. Praise him in every circumstance. See, see, God reminded his people, how, hey, listen, you're my chosen ones. I, I love you. I'm your Lord. I'm going to protect you. I'm, gonna, I, I'm your Savior. I'm your way maker. He was telling them all this, but they still was in captivity. I can imagine them thinking, God, Lord, when you going, you say you all, but when you, but then he started reminding them, remember when I did that? Remember when I got you out of Egypt? Remember when I delivered you from there? Remember when I did this for you? So you got to remember, that's, that's the time you look back. You peek back just for a moment to get some more inspiration that you can say, oh God, I know you got me because you did it before. See, they were expected to praise God. They were expected to have a continual praise. Well, don't pass the child's high enough where I'm going to have a continual praise when I'm going through this circumstance. Well, let me tell you what Jesus said. He told us how to do it in John, the fourth chapter, verses 23 and 24. 
He said this. He said, but the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. See, one of the components that's necessary for you to be able to give continual praise is truth. What truth you're talking about, Pastor Charles? The truth of God's Word. See, the only way you're going to be able to give God the, the praise that He desires and the praise that He deserves, you got to know who God is. See, you can't, just like I said earlier, you don't give your praise to people you don't even know. You don't give your praise to things you don't even care about. Like I said, you have, nobody has ever praised the water bottle. Yeah, they got a water bottle, but they're not walking around praising the water bottle. But if you don't know God, you're not going to be able to praise Him. If you don't understand who He is, then you can't give Him the glory glory that's due his name. How are you going to get to know God? You're going to have to understand his truth. What is his truth? His word. And so if you're not studying his word, if you're not digging down inside of it, telling God to let his word get in your heart and become a part of you, guess what? It's going to be hard for you to give continual praise because as soon as you get in a circumstance, you're going to want to quit. As soon as you get in a circumstance, you're going to say, I can't make it. But when God is telling you, you can do all things through him. When God is saying that I'm with you, God is telling you that you are, that you are the head and not the tail. That God is telling you that you are more than a conqueror. And then that's what the things that you will be begin to understand, and you can stand on those things. When you get there, then you can live your life like it says in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, where it says, rejoice always, see, and pray without ceasing. It says, in everything to give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You can't pray that prayer. You can't say those words if you don't know who God is. See, because you can't give thanks in everything if you don't know that God is already working it out. Matter of fact, if you're really standing on faith, God has already worked it out. You're not even waiting for him to work it out because it's already done. All you're waiting for is to manifest itself. So you're walking in total victory regardless. See, praise is not something that we only do when we're in the right place, when we got the right circumstance going on. See, our position doesn't have to be favorable for us to praise God. As, as Paul and Silas, when they were walking and, and that old demonic little girl kept bothering them and agitating them and kept telling, them, telling who they were when they were out there doing God's bidding and doing God's work. And, it's just, and after a while, Paul said, I'm sick of it. And cast the devil out. He said, I'm sick of it. That's what he said. I'm sick of it. Get out of here. But he didn't realize that that was going to cause them some trouble. But guess what? They weren't in no trouble because they was in God. And even though they got beaten and they got thrown in jail, the Scripture says at midnight, what were they doing? They weren't whining and complaining. They weren't saying, oh, God, you got me locked up in jail. No, they were singing praise to God. And they was praying and singing praise. And guess what happened? Oh, the earthquake hit. There wasn't no earthquake. It was God saying, it's time to let my people go. It's time to shake this place up. I'm going to loose their chains. I'm going to knock all the doors open, and I'm going to let them be free because they're already free. And so they was free. And see, they understood their position because they could have been complaining. They was in stocks. That means they was locked down. They weren't just in jail, but they said they were in stocks. But they didn't even recognize that because they knew they were free in God because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. They were focusing on things above and not the things that they were experiencing. That's the position that we need to be in as, as the body of Christ. It's not about what we're enduring. It's not about coronavirus. Yeah, it's important that we're praying and we're taking all the necessary precautions, but we're not running around here scared. We're not running around here afraid. We're not running around here in fear because we know who God is and we know that God is protecting us. Now, that means we're not going to go out here and act like fools. We're not going to just run out here and, and act any kind of way. But at the same time, we're going to walk in the trust that God said. He told us he's going to protect us from dangerous seen and unseen. He told us he's going to be the one that's going to protect us. See, they were in there praising God, and that's what established their position. See, their position was, oh, I'm trusting you, God. 
God, you're going to deliver us. And see, it wasn't even just for them because the Bible tells us that when, when the jail began to shake and when the chains began to fall off and the doors began to, 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 to open up, the jailer, he was going to run and kill himself. But they said, oh, don't do yourself no harm because, see, not only were they focused on God for themselves, their position helped them, but their position helped that man and his entire family because as a result, they all got saved. So you never know the situation that you're walking through, the way you walk through it, the position and the way you're standing and giving God praise. You can allow somebody else, you can just walk somebody else right out of their circumstance into a new circumstance that God had already set for them because they just finished watching you. But if you're always walking down, you always broke down, and you always hurting, you always can't make it, guess what? Ain't nobody going to get no, no, no inspiration from that. But if they see you, you always got some joy. You always got some energy. You always about doing God's bidding. You always about, oh, how great our God is. God is so good. Oh, yeah, somebody else going to grab hold to that. Somebody can do something with that. <laughs> Woo! I got one more point. Let me get my point in. Final point. Look, praise changes your perspective. Your perspective. Look, we live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen time. Listen, this world is shaped by sin. And we already know that everything that's going to happen is going to happen because that's the way of the world. That's why we got COVID-19. That's why we got all the social unrest and all the murders and all the stuff I mentioned earlier. That's the way of the world. But the thing about it is this. That shouldn't be the perspective of the believer. See, we shouldn't be looking through those lenses. See, that shouldn't be our point of view. See, because even though it exists, it doesn't mean that it affects us. Oh, yeah, it's real. We see it every day. But that's not our perspective. See, see, the Bible lets us know that in this world, we're going to have tribulations. We're going to have all this stuff. But if you finish reading that passage of Scripture, it says, but be of good cheer, because this Jesus talking, because I have overcome the world. And so if Jesus is living inside of you, and he already has overcome the world, and now he's living inside of you, he's taking a residence in your heart, guess what? Guess who didn't overcome the world? You didn't overcome the world. So your perspective shouldn't be from the world's view. Your perspective should be from the heavenly view because you're already victorious. Yeah. 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 Woo. See, we're supposed to be living in victory, not defeat. We're supposed to be walking in, in, in health, uh, not sickness. We're supposed to be walking in freedom, not bondage. We're supposed to be, 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 be walking in life, not death. We're supposed to say, oh, God, you got me. I'm victorious because you are living inside of me. <clears throat> listen, 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 listen. What Paul says, listen, Galatians, second chapter, verse 20. I'm almost finished. This is what he said. <clears throat> he says, I've been crucified with Christ. Is that your testimony? So I've been crucified with Christ, so, so, so it's no longer I to live. See, see, that's Christ living inside of me. And if Christ is living inside of me, my perspective is one of victory. He goes on to say, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, I live in the flesh. Uh, I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God. Hallelujah, who loved me and gave himself for me. How many of you have been crucified with Christ? Well, if you've been crucified with Christ, guess what? You live in victorious. You've been crucified with Christ. Guess what? Your perspective is one that's heavenly. You're more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Listen, <clears throat> Paul and Silas, they had a choice. They knew they were beaten. They knew they were wrongly in prison. But they had a choice. Is my perspective going to be on the things that happen, the things that have been done wrong to me, or I'm going to be my perspective is going to be praising God that I know who has control of this whole circumstance. See, he, he didn't just free them. He freed everybody. See, he didn't let everybody free. He shook the whole place. Hallelujah. <clears throat> See, praise changes your perspective. 
See, when you're praising God, when you're truly giving him glory and honor, guess what? You can't think about your problems. You don't think about circumstances that you're enduring. All you can think about is giving him pure praise. See, praise is vital to know you turn. See, if you can't praise God, you're going to turn. See, if you don't have the right perspective, you're going to turn. If you're not in the right position, you're going to turn. If you don't understand who you are, you're going to turn. Come on, get up on your feet. I'm about to, about to dismiss. <clears throat> but God wants us to be victorious. But it's all about praise. You got to praise your way through. I'm going to end with this song. Song of praise. From Psalm 100. Y'all thought I was going to sing, didn't you? <laughs> and listen to what it says. So, 100 song, very familiar song. But do we understand what it means, what it's saying? It says to make a joyful shout to the Lord. All ye lands, that's everybody. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. That's what we started out singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. And it's he who has made us. You know, I just finished talking about it. You didn't create yourself. God created us. He created us to do exactly what this passage is telling us, to worship and praise his name. He made us, not we ourselves. We're his people. We're the sheep of his pasture. Now, if we're the sheep of God's pasture, guess what? You're not going to go hungry. You're not going to go lacking anything. God's going to provide everything that you need. But listen, it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, not with heavy hearts, not being sad, not being overwhelmed. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with what? Praise. <laughs> Be thankful to, unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. We just finished singing that. And his mercy is everlasting. And this truth endures through all generations. Aren't you glad about that today? I, doubt, I, 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 I dare you to give God a great praise right now. I dare you to give him a praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your God.